Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the latest instalment of Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. So today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Osric Fingerbone and the Spring of Jax by Michael Israel Jarvis. Uh, Michael Israel Jarvis is an author I'm fairly familiar with. I've actually met him once or twice. Uh, I used to work as his book manager, actually. Uh, he used to be published by a company called Book Trope, and I had books out through them as well. And, uh, yeah, I'll read you the blurb, and then I'll get into the book. So, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. London, 1865. Mayhem blossoms throughout the city as Osric struggles to correct the bloody sins of his past. His apprentice, Edward Sachs, has become difficult to guide. The boy murderer is 13 years old, grieving his sister's betrayal, and is full of anger, a dangerous combination. Eleanor, out for vengeance, makes her plans, but so too does a figure from the deeps of the Undercity. London is about to learn a new name, as smoke rises and blood runs from the rooftops. So, this is the second book in the Osric Fingerbone series. The first book is called Osric Fingerbone and the Boy Murderer. And basically it's set in a almost a steampunky version of London. Edwardian slash Victorian London. But it's also a kind of London as it would exist if uh, alchemy and magic had kind of powered the Industrial Revolution as opposed to science and machines. So we follow Osric Fingerbone in this and... Uh, the boy murderer is uh, Edward Sachs. Again, his, it's, uh, uh, it's his apprentice. And there's basically like the bad guy in this is they're using alchemy and uh, kind of potions and that kind of stuff basically to strip away uh, people's free will. So uh, there's actually an appendix, not an appendix, a uh, like a yeah glossary here. So, uh, so for example, here we go. So this is what he's, what they're giving them. So. Uh, Serum slash sera. So it's one serum or two or more sera. Any liquid alchemical preparation designed for use by introduction into the bloodstream. Specialists in their creation are called serumists. Uh, and then we have... Uh, blah, 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 blah. So yes, yeah, so then we have the arc essence. So this is the foundational element of alchemy. Inert in its solid mineral form, application of mercury liquefies the so-called philosopher's stone into a drinkable or injectable form. But then you have people uh, like the anathema. So an anathema is a person who is allergic to the arc essence to the degree that they cannot suffer any effective concentration of it without endangering their life. So basically, some people can have these serums, the sera, sorry. Some people can have the sera, some can have like a limited amount of it, and some can just sort of go crazy with the sera. And different things do different, you know, different sera do different things for people. But one of the things that the bad guy in it is using them to do is to basically take over people's mind and to turn them into uh, jacks. So um, they, it actually reminds me of Cassandra Clare and the, uh, the Infernal Devices, where in that they have like the mechanical soldiers. Uh, and, and this is kind of a similar thing, except instead of mechanical, they're basically, you know, been forced to have some of this, this serum. And, uh, and then, you know, they've lost their free will, which is a frightening concept, I think. So in terms of how much I actually enjoyed this book, so I, I must admit I did enjoy the first book more. The problem that I had here is that I think the author kind of assumes that you as the reader are still super familiar with the world, if that makes sense. And because it's been a while since I read the first book and I have a terrible memory, there were quite a few times where I wasn't too sure, you know, the different relationships with people or what exactly was going on. However, that was offset in, in part by the glossary of terms. That was, uh, at the end, that was pretty useful to, you know, to understand what they're talking about when they're getting kind of more technical when it comes to the alchemy side of things. I really enjoyed the world building. I think the world building is what Michael Israel Jarvis has always been good at in all of his books. That's what it's been amazing at. And I think the, the magic system here is really interesting as well. So it's, you know, if, if that's your thing, I know a lot of people kind of get really into different magic systems. And um, yeah, it was interesting to see that different take on it. Different to see, the, uh, interesting to see this different London as well. I also liked as well, actually, some of the place names. So, um, so for example, here we have Manchester, which is Manchester, a major city in the Northwest of England, because it's England, you know, and then Birmingham is Brummagem. Uh, then we've got Vienna is spelled V-Y-E-N-A. So it's like, again, it's just this slightly different world. Alba is Scotland, Simri for Wales. The characters in this were, were, were pretty good. Uh, I, I think it did a good job of building them from the first one, although like I say, it has been a while since I read the first one. I did really like the dialogue. I think the dialogue in particular between the characters, well, the, why, the reason I like the dialogue is because the dialogue 
helped to build the characters, whereas it doesn't always do that, you know? And I think just the conversations that they had kind of helped to, again, to show who the characters were without just telling the reader, but also to actually kind of illustrate the different relationships between them all as well. So, for example, even some of the... We have some bits where there are some letters uh, from uh, to Edward from his sister. I did spot one mistake in it, uh, though it said two, which is with a T-O instead of T-O-O. But other than that, I mean, I can't, I can't really fault it as far as the writing goes. Uh, for my rating, I gave it a 3.75 out of 5. It wasn't quite a 4, just because... Again, just because I did find my attention drifting at times, but it's pretty solid for an indie novel and uh, I would definitely recommend the first one. So maybe check out the first one if you enjoy that, then definitely consider moving on to this one as well. So there we go. Bit of a quicker review, but I'm, I'm trying not to ramble on as much and I think, I think I'm doing alright. So also I'm trying to catch up because this was, this was the November read for Tarden Danes Indie Read Along. And it's almost December and I haven't posted the October one yet, so... But I'm catching up. In December, by the way, I'm going to be reading some Ollie Jacobs books. So he's an author from here in High Wycombe. And uh, yeah, I went to his house recently and he, he gave me some of his books. So I don't know how many of them I'm going to read. Maybe just one or two. They are the Kirk Sandblaster books. And um, they're kind of almost Douglas Adamsy, Kind of quirky sci-fi humour, I guess. So yeah, should be good. But anyway, on that note, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you're going to be checking out Osric Fingerbone and the Boy Murderer. Let me know if you've been reading any indie books this month. I'm always looking for recommendations. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.